بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وافضل الصلاة وتم التسليم على أشرف الأنبياء سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد كلما ذكرك الذاكرون وغفل عن ذكرك الغافلون Today we have congregated to cover a subject which is theoretically understood by many but practically becomes very difficult because the very theory that they have learned is incorrect which is how to further studies in what is known as dars e nizami or the nizami syllabus named after Siyaluddin um, Nidhamuddin As-Siyalwi rahmallahu ta'ala Nidhamuddin As-Siyalwi was the one who formulated a syllabus known as dars e nizami the very inception or the start of the syllabus is with books on Arabic grammar, on morphology and nahaw, which is <coughs> Arabic syntax. And one of the first phrases you learn when attending a class is as-sarfu ummul ulumi wa nahaw abuha, which means sarf morphology is the mother of all the sciences, wa nahaw abuha, and the Arabic grammar or the Arabic syntax is the father, meaning a person cannot enter knowledge except by learning sarf and nahaw. This is why many times in the past as well, students who have started studying have requested from me to explain to them how even the tables of morphology, sarf, how they are to be understood because simple concepts are not clear in their minds and therefore they find it very difficult to enter studying but the very inception the start of studying is with sarf and nahaw when studying this syllabus you would have to keep in mind that there are four stages to studying the most difficult stage is the first stage. So when a person joins any madrasa, school, or any circle, halqatul ilm, a circle of knowledge, I would advise them to keep four marahil, four steps in mind. And remember that the most difficult step is the first step. In the first stage, a person will learn the sarf tables, the tables of morphology, what they call gardan in Farsi, and they would have to memorize these gardan tables. But alongside this, they would have to learn syntax, Arabic grammar. But most people who ask regarding dars e nizami will say, we want to learn Arabic they mix up learning spoken Arabic with the dars e nizami syllabus. The, the purpose of the dars e nizami syllabus is not necessarily to teach people spoken Arabic. This is why there are so many scholars from the Indian subcontinent who, who have studied in depth great works, but they are unable to speak Arabic because they have not lived in an Arabic speaking environment. So the purpose of the syllabus was not to make people speak. Yes, it is introduced in Madaris across the Indian subcontinent today. Uh, the, in, the Arabic speaking courses have been introduced where scholars are trained in giving sermons in Arabic as well as conversation, conversational Arabic. But the mistaken the, the mistake many people make is thinking that dars e nizami will teach them how to speak Arabic because the intention of some people is only to converse in Arabic. 
But the purpose of Darse Nidhami is not to converse in Arabic, but to understand Islamic sciences, learn the sciences of Islam. Primarily, you would say, those Islamic sciences, which are the goal, would be summed up in three uloom, three sciences. Number one, Al-Quran al karim wa ulumuhu, which is the sciences of the Quran, which includes commentary on the Quran, how to study the Quran, how to approach the Quran for studying. The second would be Ulum al Hadith, which or Ulum al Hadith in Nabawi, which is studying the prophetic narrations. And the third would be Ilm al Fiqh, which is jurisprudence. This is the, the goal of studying to understand Al Quran al Kareem, to understand the ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and to understand fiqh, jurisprudence for our, our everyday Islamic life. And whenever people have questions, they can ask those people who have studied. Fas'alu ahla dhikri in kuntum la ta'alamun. Ask the people of remembrance if you do not know. So when entering this course, the very first intention should be, I am studying this course in order to understand the Quran and its sciences in order to understand the ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa the Qur'an and the hadith being the principal sources of Islam. And I am studying in order to understand the books written by the ulama in explanation of the Qur'an and the sunnah. The intention should not be in order to learn Arabic to impress people that I can hold a conversation in Arabic or I can write in Arabic or I can read in Arabic. If this is the intention from the onset, then you have failed at the first step. Now what happens with this first stage is that people stay on theoretical Arabic or th theoretical grammar for too long. A book like Nahv Mir should not be studied for more than three months. Nahv Mir should not be studied for longer than three months. Maximum five months. In this particular translation, the chapters have been divided into 20 sections. So 20, the book Nahmir, the original book, is not in chapters. The book is one text. But this has been divided into 20 chapters. So if a person paces themselves, they can learn a chapter a week, if they learn if they learn a chapter a week they will finish the book in 5 months a chapter a week now what makes a study difficult for people is that the book originally the first book a person studies in grammar is written in farsi and then it is taught in urdu then the student makes notes in english even if the book is taught in English, it becomes difficult because a person does not have an English text to refer to. Because sometimes you may sit in a class, you hear the teacher talking, speaking, lecturing, teaching, but not everything will enter the mind. Some things you may miss. So you may need a book to refer back to in order to memorize an actual text. What I wrote at the back of this, students should not spend more than three months studying this text prior to applying it, meaning applying the text by reading Arabic. Many students lose the zeal to study if they are kept on theoretical Arabic for too long. Theoretical Arabic for too long. What happens in some madaris, people study sarf and nahaw without applying the sarf and nahaw onto a text, without reading for longer than a year and a student begins to feel insufficient, unable to study Dars and Nizami. They begin to think they are unable to do so. So they suffer uh, from a burnout that they think that they do not have the mind to do this. But in reality that is not the case. The reason why they go through this is because the lack of uh, English texts or, uh, or an English translation of the Nahmir itself 
as well as being unable to keep up with note making and then referring back to those notes and then becoming confused because lack of application. What they did in prior in the old times or even in Pakistan today, they have a, something known as Majmu'atu Nahmir. They teach this Majmu'atu Nahmir. First they have Nahmir. So the student learns Nahmir and then they apply Nahmir after the completion of Nahmir they begin to read Arabic texts. So straight away they move to Arabic texts. So the fir- one of the first texts they do is Khulasa, which means summary. This is a short text. So the student after memorizing Nahmir, so if you take three to five months to memorize this book with a teacher, straight away you move on to stage two. What is stage two? So remember, the author of this book, Ali bin Muhammad al-Jurjani, rahimullah, who passed away in the year 816. He mentions at the very intro- at the beginning, at the uh, in the introduction of the book, he states, for the novice student, after memorizing terminologies of the language, familiarizing oneself with the derivatives of words, and developing precision in the critically important aspects of Arabic morphology. The student can with great ease utilize this knowledge to understand how Arabic is composed. So what in the theoretical period, the first period, what should a student have done? Memorized mufradat, Arabic words. So a book should be memorized with Arabic words. Learn the meanings of those Arabic words. Alongside this, learn the sort tables read the sort tables to a teacher and learn the Nahmir by heart, the entire book by heart. This is the first stage which a student should not uh, feel insufficient or unable to carry on. This, In reality, even though this stage has been made difficult for people, in reality the stage is simple. If you, if you really think about it, all a person would have to do is memorize sort tables uh, Arabic words and the uh, Nahmir. Once they have memorized these three things, they are to apply this by reading Arabic texts to a teacher. This is the s- second stage, the second stage of Dars Nizami, where a student is able to read Arabic text or learns how to re- read Arabic text correctly. This is the second um, stage of Dars Nizami. This stage can take up to a year. So the first stage shouldn't take longer than six months. If you are spending more than six months, and I would say if you spend more than a year just learning theoretical Arabic, then you are wasting your time. If you spend more than a year, a year is pushing it. In reality, it should be done in six months. The second stage, what they would do is they would teach books like Khulasa, Jumal, and Tatimma. These are short Arabic texts. Khulasa is a summary of Nahu in written in Arabic. And then Jumal is a summary of all the different types of sentences in, in the Arabic language. And Tatimma is a completion of the subject of Nahu. They, so a student can attain, fo- photo, acquire photocopies of these three small texts and a, another text I would recommend is Khulasa Kaidani, which is a small pamphlet on uh, Salah and prayer. So if a student reads after finishing so, uh, one book in Sarf, uh, vocabulary, uh, a good amount of Arabic vocabulary, and the Nahmir, memorize the Nahmir, they are ready for stage two. In stage two, they can read Khulasa Tatimma and Jumal, small texts. Remember, you do not parochially have to stick to these texts. A teacher can choose different texts for your training. So depending on the teacher, he may choose different texts. But these are recommendations. And another text is Khulasa Kaidani, which is a small pamphlet on Salah and prayer. Alongside with the Arba'een of Al-Imam al 40 hadith. So a person 
will read these to a teacher and gain proficiency in reciting Arabic without tashkil, meaning the vowels, as well as the book Sharhu Miyati Amil of Abdul Rahman Al Jami, Rahimullah, the commentary on the smaller text of Abdul Qahir Al Jurjani, Rahimullah Ta'ala. So once a person has completed these texts, he should be able to read Arabic to a, satisfact, uh, to a, a level which is uh, sufficient. Then they are ready for the third stage. What is the third stage? The third stage would be reciting one book to a teacher in every science. So in Sarf, a teacher may decide to teach a Shafia or Ilm Sigha, which is available in Arabic also, in Sarf. In Nahaw, a teacher may decide to do Hidayatul Nahaw, and Hidayatul Nahaw is the standard text in Dars Nidami. In Balagha, they may choose the book Durusul Balagha. Remember, Durusul Balagha is not a, an original book of Dars Nidami, it was introduced later. But some teachers may choose another text in Ilmul Balagha, but as long as the person covers one text in Balagha. In Mantiq, logic, the student may read Al-Mirqat of Fadl Imam Al-Khairabadi, Rahimullah, the, the father of Fadl Al-Haq, Khairabadi. But this again is a later addition to the Dars Nidami. As some teachers may choose the text Isa Ghawji of Athiruddin Al-Abhari, Rahimullah, who passed away in the year 660, a smaller text in logic. So you have a text in Sarf, a text in Nahaw, a morphology and grammar, then a text in Balagha, rhetoric, then a text in logic. Then in Fiqh, jurisprudence, the student will read Nur Lidah because the Dars Nidami syllabus is devised for the Hanafis. But if they are Shafi'i, they may read Matnul Ghaya wa Taqrib. If they are Maliki, they may read Al Murshidul Mu'in. If they are Hanbali, they may read Mukhtasar Khirqi. So, different texts for, according to the school. So, Nur al Dah and Al Quduri. Then, in Usul al Fiqh, they may read Usul al Shashi. Usul al Shashi is the standard text of Dars al Nidami. And then, in Usul al Hadith, the student may read Al Nuzhatul Nadar of Al Hafiz. Ahmed bin Hajar al Asqalani rahimallahu ta'ala. In hadith itself, they may read Mishkatul Masabih of a Tabrezi rahimallahu ta'ala. In Ulum al Quran, they may read Al Fawzul Kabir of Shah Waliullah rahimallah, or they may read Zubtatul Itqan fi Ulum al Quran of a Sayyid Muhammad bin Alawi al Maliki rahimallah or the contemporary book of uh, a Shaykh uh, Sabuni, uh, At-Tibyan fi Ulum al-Quran, whichever book their teacher may choose. Then in Ilm al-Kalam, they may read a book like Al-Ma'rifa of Abdul Karim al-Rifa'i, or uh, Sanusi's text, Al-Sughra. So like this, in every science, they must read one text, complete one text cover to cover, and learn the text completely uh, and master that text. So this is the third stage of Dars e Nidhami. When the student has completed this third stage, they should be proficient in understanding Arabic and reading Arabic, but not only reading Arabic. See, the target goal is not to only read Arabic. The target is having a good understanding of each Islamic science, in every science. Then the, st the student is ready for the fourth stage. Now I believe if a person reaches and completes this third stage, for many people this is sufficient. They can read books on Islam written by the previous classical scholars and contemporary scholars. They should be able to do this. They've had sufficient training to read books on Islam. But some people would want to uh, progress. This is the fourth stage. But remember, the stage one and two and three are difficult stages, the most difficult being stage one. 
with stage four, a person would want to complete the entire dars e nizami syllabus. Now in each science, the classical dars e nizami have certain books, and then at a later period, the scholars added books. Some people tend to say that if you want to become a true scholar, you would have to stick pedantically to the old dars e nizami syllabus. Is this true? I would say no. The, they are missing the purpose of the syllabus. The entire purpose of the syllabus was to create a malaka, an ability within the student in each Islamic science. The purpose was not to stick pedantically to a, a, a group of texts. This is not the purpose. So in the classical syllabus, you had in Balagha, Ilmul Balagha, you had Talkhisul Miftah of Abdul Rahman Al Qazwini, Rahimullah. And then you had Mukhtasarul Ma'ani of Sa'aduddin Al Taftazani, which is a commentary on Talkhis. Then you had Al Mutawwal, which is a longer commentary uh, on the text of uh, the Talkhis. These are the three books studied in Dars e Nizami in Ilmul Balagha. If a student studies all three books cover to cover with the teacher, he may in some cases know the book and in many cases not even know the book because really a student only masters a book once he has studied the book, he has taught the book numerous times. He will master the book. But the purpose of teaching these three books was in order to make the student have an ability in Ilmul Balagha, in the science of Balagha. The purpose is not the book. The purpose is the science itself. In Nahaw, for instance, the syllabus is Nahaw Mir. Or they may study the entire Majmu'atu Nahmir. Then they study Sharhu Miyati Amil. Then they study Hidayatu Nahaw. Then they study Al Kafiya of Ibn al Hajib. Then they study Al Fawaidu Diyaiya, known as Mullah Jami by Abdul Rahman Al Jami Rahimullah. After this, the student should be proficient in grammar, Nahaw. But is the purpose the syllabus or the subject of grammar? The, the purpose is the subject because a teacher could replace those books. He could teach them uh, the uh, other works like Awdahul Mathalik or the Sharhul Alfiya of Ibn Malik, the commentary of uh, the Alfiya of Ibn Malik. Or they can teach them Mughni Labib instead of Al Fawaidu Diyaiya. The, the purpose is not the syllabus, but the purpose is having a mastery over the subject. In the same way, in Sarf al Nahaw, Balagha, in Mantiq, the old Dars e Nizami syllabus will have books like Majmu'atul Mantiq, which has Sughra, Kubra, Ta'rifu al Ashya, all these different works in there, Isa Ghoji. After this, at a later period, the work Al Mirqat was introduced. After this, they study Tahdeeb al Mantiq uh, with the commentary of Sa'aduddin al Taftazani, uh, sorry, the commentary of uh, Mullah Yazdi. And Sa'aduddin Taftazani is the author of Tahdeeb al Mantiq. On that work, Mullah Yazdi has a commentary which is known, known as Sharh al Tahdeeb. This is what they call the book. This is the book studied after Al Mirqat. After this, they study Qutbi, which is a commentary of Qutbuddin al Razi on Al Risalat al Shamsiya in Mantiq. Alongside this, they will study the commentary of Sayyid al Sharif, the author of Nahmir, on Al Qutbi, known as Mir Qutbi. Then they will study. Sullam al Ulum by Muhibullah al Bihari, Rahimullah, and its commentaries like Mullah Hassan, Hamdullah, Al Qadi al Mubarak. These are different commentaries on Sullam al Ulum, which is in Mantiq. They finish the Mantiq syllabus with these works, and there are other works as well. But after having studied all these books in Mantiq, is the purpose to know the books of Mantiq. Or is the purpose to know the subject of mantiq? The purpose is to know the subject of mantiq. Some people, they will come to read advanced text with me. 
And when we cover the text, so if we read an advanced text in mantiq, when we use simple mantiq terms, if we say this is qadiyah hamliya or this is qadiyah shartiyah or muttasila and munfasila and mani'atul jama' and mani'atul khulub and haqiqiyah, or we go into the taqseem, the different types of qiyas, istithna'i and istiqra'a and iqtirani and tamthil and istiqra'a, when we use these terms, the students should already know these terms. But what they expect from the teacher is to break down every single term for them in the text. So when you do not do this for them, they will complain that the teacher is not teaching correctly. But the reality is the teacher is teaching correctly. You are not prepared to understand that text. You should read a more basic text and understand those terms. So there are some people in Talkhis miftah we may come across a sentence where the author will say, this is like a qadiyah muhmala. Now they expect me to explain to them what qadiyah muhmala is, when in reality, if you're reading Talkhisul Miftah, you must know the definition of qadiyah muhmala from the back of your mind. A person should know this. So this is why it is important to, to understand the third stage. In the third stage, I said, a, a, a basic book in every science must be mastered. So when you advance yourself in a particular science, a person will be familiar with the terminology. In Mantiq, if you master 130 terms in the third stage, you will have no problems in studying any book of Mantiq. In the same way, in philosophy, in Falsafa, they study works like Hidayatul Hikmah of Afiruddin al-Abhari and its commentary by Mabdi. And they also have a commentary by Mullah Sadra. Again, or other works in philosophy like Shamsi Bazira, if a person studies this outdated Greek philosophy, does it mean that this outdated philosophy can be applied in the modern age? The answer is no. But what it will give them is an ability to read books of Kalam, Ilmul Kalam. So the purpose of studying these outdated books on philosophy was that when you read something like Sharhul Mawaqif, Sharhul Mawaqif, uh, Sharhul Mawaqif is also by Sayyid Sharif, the author of Nahmir. When you read something uh, on the text Al Mawaqif by Adududdin Al Iji, Rahmullah, when you read something like Sharhul Mawaqif, you should be able to understand when they refute philosophers because you have been trained in ancient philosophy. In the same way when you read Sharh al-Maqasid or the Sharh al-Aqaid of Taftazani rahmullah, and its commentaries. But some people if they study all these books, they are still unable to apply these sciences in a modern context. What is the purpose of studying the books of Mantiq and the books of outdated philosophy? Remember in Mantiq and philosophy they are not given as much importance as Ulum al Quran and Ulum al Hadith. Ulum al Quran and Ulum al Hadith and Fiqh have more importance. But if someone studies outdated philosophy and outdated mantiq and they are not able to apply this in a modern context, there is no need of studying all those books. Some people therefore ask when we study Dars e Nidami in this country, should we leave our academic? Uh, study, uh, studies in university, I would say no. Every or majority of the Dars e Nizami students must apply within the arts. They must uh, apply in courses like philosophy, study sociology, theology in university. They must be uh, equipped with Western academic studies also. I believe this. And is this possible? The answer is yes. We have living proof today within our circles of knowledge that there are students of knowledge who attend classes every day for one to two hours and who have applied in courses in theology and history and other subjects, even medicine. Students who have applied in medicine. So does a person need to drop out from college and school and from university to learn dars e nizami in the UK? The answer is no. And the living proof is the classes taught by myself and uh, other teachers in this madrasa, 
in this school, in this masjid, that we teach classes and we have students who attend university also. When these Dars e Nizami students attend university, what subjects must they do? I believe they must study the social sciences, they must study the arts, they must study philosophy in order to refute philosophy. They must study sociology because of all the social ills we have in our society. Uh, in the same way, they must study history. They must study all the different liberal arts. If they decide to go into medicine, that is also good. So they can give fatwa in the future and medicine. No Dars e Nizami student must make their studies an excuse for leaving study, uh, Western academic studies or uh, any other acad uh, academic studies. Because so many people, when they drop out of school, or they drop out of college, or they drop out of university, make Dars e Nizami a second, re um, second choice. In reality, dropouts, people who refuse to go to university or refuse to go to college, should not be accepted in the Dars e Nizami classes. They should be told to find a job and work. People who study, uh, people who study academics, uh, academia must enroll into Dars e Nizami, and they are able to do so alongside uh, with their Dars e Nizami studies and their academic studies. So then, the advanced subjects also go into al fiqh. So a student may study in the in the fourth stage, al quduri, kanzu daqaiq, sharh al wiqaya. Al Hidayah of Al Marghinani. This was the classic syllabus. What is the purpose of studying all these books? Is the purpose to say that you have finished all these books? Or is the purpose to give you jurisprudence? The purpose is to give you jurisprudence, Malaka in Al Fiqh. Unfortunately, so many people uh, within the Dars e Nizami subculture in the UK compete with one another in order to say, I am the only one who has studied X and Y and Z book from cover to cover. But the same miskeen, the same miskeen will be unable to stand to trial or to test when they are tested on that same subject. If anyone makes claims, remember, if anyone makes claims, they will be tested according to their claims. This is why in my old classes from seven to eight years ago I taught the students that there are no claims from the onset a student and a teacher should not make claims regarding their learning they should not make claims that we are the only people who have studied uh, the books of mantiq in their entirety so if you meet someone who knows mantiq you will be tested on your mantiq because you claim to have studied all the books of mantiq so leave this competition because there is no competition. If you have ability in any of those subjects, your ability will show itself. You do not need to boast regarding your ability or how much you have studied. Because the purpose of the syllabus, again, is to give you ability in that subject. In the same way, there are books on usul al-fiqh, uh, the legal theory or principles of jurisprudence. So they will have, after usul al-shashi, in stage four, they'll have books like Nur al-Anwar, which is a commentary on the Matn al-Manar, then uh, of a Nasafi, and Nur al-Anwar by Mullah Ahmed Jeevan, Rahimahullah. Then you have books after Nur al-Anwar, like Al-Husami, uh, Muntakhab al-Husami, which is by Husam al-Din al ikhsikti Rahimahullah. Then you have books like uh, three books in one, which is known as At-Talwih wa Tawdih ala Matn al tanqih one of the authors of that is Sa'aduddin al-Taftazani, three books in one. Then they have a book known as Musallam al-Thabut, again by Muhibullah al-Bihari, the author of Sulam al-Ulum in Mantiq. These are the texts that they have in Usul al-Fiqh. Unfortunately, in Usul al-Hadith, I would say in the subcontinent, this is their weakest field. Because in Usul al-Hadith, the Madaris tend to have only a Nuzha to Nadar. Some of them have a nuzha to another and maybe one or two other texts. Uh, this is not for all the madaris in the Indian subcontinent. There are some madaris which have an excellent ulum al-hadith program. 
But then in and then in every subject like this, they will have a set number of books. Now, what some madaris do is remove some books and add some books. So, and some madaris will choose to teach portions of books. So, kanzu daqaiq, they will teach a certain portion of it. Sharhul wiqai, they will teach a certain portion. The purpose of reading these books is to give you ability to be able to pick up any book and fiqh and read and understand what the author is saying. It is not that I have finished the syllabus cover to cover, but yet when you will ask them from another book and they are unable to open the book and explain a passage from that book, or they are unable to, un to understand basic concepts. This happens sometimes because of such students, books are delayed. Uh, for instance, if we decide to study Musallam al thabut or Talwih wa Tawdih ala Matni Tanqih, or a book in uh, Mantiq, an advanced text in Mantiq, what happens is while going through that text, a student who hasn't done, uh, who may have done the previous books, but still doesn't understand Mantiq as a subject as opposed to a book, will continuously interrupt the teacher and ask for basic definitions. And because of this, the book is delayed. Or when studying, uh, this happened with me when studying Al Jami of Al Imam Tirmidhi, Rahimullah. I covered Al Jami Tirmidhi with the particular teacher cover to cover but because of students who were not proficient in ulum al hadith the book was delayed by two years it took us two years to read al jami of al imam tirmidhi because they were not proficient in ulum al hadith so this fourth stage again is uh, m multiple books and i would say the students need to leave Competition, madaris also need to leave competition, teachers need to leave competition because it, it is not a competition. If the, the purpose of studying qala Allahu wa qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in order to learn the Islamic sciences. This is why the first hadith a person learns is the hadith on niyat, innama al-a'malu bin niyat, actions are judged by intentions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable our intentions to be correct and make us change our int intentions. Jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam amahu ahluh. Jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam amahu ahluh. Jazallahu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam amahu ahluh. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.